what you're able to then get is a is a real top level view of kind of how it all works together, which is super valuable. This week, there were some questions from some longtime Entreport users uh, about the campaign builder and some just general, uh, you know, kind of confusion about how this thing works. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of go through, start, I'm going to start by going through the, uh, the campaign builder uh, and the features of this thing and kind of like how it works. Uh, and then I'm going to go back and look at the specific questions um, because the the couple of people that were asking questions gave gave some some specific use case examples that they'd like to see done in the Entreport campaign builder, and so I'll show you how I would put those together, and uh, and we will take it from there. So this is the campaign builder, and this is um, this is the screen you get when you start from scratch, right? So you haven't you haven't chosen one of the templates uh, from the marketplace, but you start from scratch. And, uh, and, you know, one of the things that's, that's interesting about this campaign builder and different than uh, most of the others out there on the, on the market is that, is that you can have multiple disconnected campaign paths. If you look at many of the uh, kind of small business, simpler systems out there, you can have multiple different triggers, but then they all end up leading to the same path. And that's... Um, a, a pretty significant limitation. That basically means that that this whole campaign has to be, uh, you know, basically one process. And um, while there may be different ways of getting on this process, um, you uh, you are basically sending everybody down one one process. And there might be little paths along the way or something, but it's kind of one thing. And what that means is you need a whole bunch of campaigns to run your business. In fact, you need a campaign for every separate individual process. And, and when we set out to build this thing, the goal that we had was to give people, I mean, like, why do you build a visual campaign builder like this? We had sequences before. Um, well, you build a campaign mapping tool like this so that people can understand their business from a high level, they can see what contacts are doing from a high level and, and you know, how the whole process is working together. And, and, you know, but if you have a bunch of individual campaigns for every different little process that happens in your business, then you've got no high level. You just have a bunch of different individual campaigns and then you got to kind of remember or map out in different software, how people are moving through, uh, you know, your business as they move through all your individual processes, you know, for example, capturing a lead and following up and whatever it might be. So uh, when you're able to have these multiple disconnected campaigns uh, on one map, what you're able to then get is a, is a real, you know, top level view of kind of how it all works together, which is super valuable. Um, but one thing you do need to understand about that is that, you know, just like in your real life business, people can be a part of multiple processes at once, right? Somebody might be getting your newsletter and they might be on a launch sequence. They might be a new customer and getting an onboarding sequence. They might be getting a referral request process. And so there's many different processes that a particular contact might be actually moving through in your real business. Now, in, in simpler systems, you only a contact can only be on one place in a map at once, but in real life, that's not how it works. And so just like real life, in the Entreport Campaign Builder, a contact can be on this map in more than one place at a time. And that's an important Thing to understand. They can be on here more than once and they can be moving through these various processes, um, you know, as separate instances of the contact. So that's something to understand about this thing. This is a top down map. You can, you can connect these things, but you might have, you know, three or four different can sort of campaign pathways running at the same time. And you'll see how that kind of works. Now at the top of Every one of these pathways, I can keep adding these different pathways. These are all what we call triggers. And the triggers are, um, you know, the, the specific criteria that when they occur, when this thing happens, then, you know, this trigger will, will happen. So add a contact here. It actually says right what it means. Add 
this trigger adds a contact here when any of the selected triggers are met. All right, adds a contact here when any of the selected triggers are met. So, for example, um, if you set contact is created, well, then, and now it just says, add a contact here when the, the record is first created. Well, very nice. Over here, I could say, well, how about when a form is filled out? Contact submits a form. Which form? Well, let's see. How about um, the polar bear party form? Great. So then it says submits form polar bear party. So when that happens, the contact is going to get out of here. Now, there are settings that you need to understand about, about this, um, this trigger. And here they are. So let's read what these mean. Okay. Um, so it says, who can activate this trigger? This is an important setting. So any contact in the account is the default setting. So that means that if they're in your list, then they're gonna get pulled onto this campaign when this trigger is activated. Um, so as soon as the contact is created, then they'll be added here. Same thing here, if they submit the polar bear party uh, form, then, and, and if they're, you know, then they're in your account, that means that they'll get added to this, to this campaign at the top there. You can change that to limit it to only be triggerable by contacts that are already on this map. Okay, that's interesting. So that means if they're not already somewhere on this map, this trigger won't work for them. And there's lots of interesting cases for why you might use that setting. And we'll show you, show you that in a minute. But for now, we're going to leave it as uh, any contact in the account. Now, the next thing, uh, the next, the next, uh, setting you want to look at here is very important. Again, it's um, if the contact is already on this map, then move them here when triggered. That's the default. So if the contact is somewhere on this map and then this thing gets triggered, what are we going to do? We're going to take the contact from wherever they are, even if they're in multiple places, and then move that contact here. And they'll then move down this path and be removed from where they were. Another possibility is if they're already on this map, you can just ignore this trigger. I don't want to do this pathway if they're already on this map somewhere. That's uh, another possibility. And the third possibility here is to add this contact here again, a, a second or third or tenth instance of this contact at this place. And that means also leave them wherever else they are. And it even says that right here. Adds the contact here again and also leave them wherever else they are on the map. So those are the three kind of crucial settings that uh, or two crucial settings that you really need to be aware of as you as you set up these triggers. The third one here is uh, important to see too. It's a uh, and, it, and it says this trigger can only be activated once per contact. And that does exactly what it says. If you uh, check that box, then a contact can only ever trigger it once. And if it triggers it again, it won't, um, it just will ignore the thing. Okay, so those are important settings. N know that they exist and, uh, and, and we'll show you more about how these are gonna work as we do real examples. So looking at the trigger, uh, this particular trigger settings, this is gonna be triggered when a contact is created. And then we've got conditions. Every one of these, condi these triggers has their own conditions. And it says, this trigger is activated only if the following conditions are true. Okay, so I wanna say, uh, trigger this thing when the, uh, when the contact is created, but let's see, I wanna say only for Google contacts, people with, um, email addresses. Maybe I want to send them a thing that says, you know, I don't know what. Hey, here's how to, here's how to, uh, you know, whitelist my email in, in Google or something like that. Um, so this thing will trigger, but only if, if this particular set of conditions are true. Now I can add more conditions here. I could say, um, or has the tag blue. Okay. So this will, it, when this thing is triggered, then the system will check these conditions. And if either one of these things are true, then that then the conditions are, are true. Yes. And then um, the, the contact will be added here and then move immediately down 
down the map. I can also change this to and to make sure that both of these things are required. So email contains Gmail and they have the tag blue, in which case both those things have to be uh, be there in order for the contact to be added here and then, um, and then move down the map. Okay, so now it says exactly what's gonna happen. Add contact here when the record is first created and two conditions are true. Great. So what happens? When a contact is added here, well, they are instantly moved right down the map to the next element on the map. And it says right here, what happens next? Tell us what happens next. After they get added here, what happens next? Click here to add a new element to your map. I'm going to do that. But before I do that, I got to explain what this guy is over here. This is the first trigger that gets added to your map. Um, and, um, and it's always here and you can't remove it. So what's unique about this trigger? Well, this particular trigger is, um, is the one that is going to get used when you add a contact manually to this campaign. So it says exactly what it does here. It says the contact starts here if added manually to the campaign by a form, rules, or other campaigns. So if you've been around Entreport for a long time, you remember that it used to be that in sequences, you always had to add people to sequences, add contacts to sequences. And so you can, you can go into here, you can, um, let's see, if I go to, um, I'll show you what I mean exactly. If I go to contacts and I select a contact, a couple of contacts, and I go to campaigns and I add them to a particular campaign and I submit this, or another way to do it would be to click on the on the contact and just go down and find the uh, the campaigns um, uh, sub collection here. So I can, I can just add them here. Um, that is going to add them to the campaign. Another way to do it is on a, on a form. You can set the form up to add them to a campaign when the form is filled out. Uh, lots of ways to get people kind of manually added to a campaign. And when you do that, well, are either of these things triggered? Not necessarily. We don't know where to put them on this map unless we have a place. And so when they're manually added or added in groups or added by a form, they're going to get added to this spot here and they'll end up going down this path. Okay, so that's what's going to happen there. And a lot of times you don't care about that. So I don't usually use that. That's not how I set up my campaign. So I just put an end right there and say, if they, if they get added manually, I'm just going to end it. That's not because I'm never going to use that. To me, it makes more sense to, to kind of pull people into these campaigns when, when the, uh, the triggers occur. So in this particular case, they filled out a form and, and so they're going to move down immediately to the next spot on the map and it says what happens next click here to add a new element to your map and so i do that and i've got all these different elements that i can that i can add to them to my map here and so this is what happens next so there's here's the kind of popular ones the ones that are used most often uh, and then here's the longer list um, this is every action that is available so i can add them to another campaign i can update the contact that has changed a value in the contact record I can send them an SMS message, a text message. I can assign a task to one of my team members about this contact. I can cancel their open orders. I can add them to a lead router. I can notify somebody on my team, put them on a fulfillment list. I can add a product to their purchase history. I can um, send them an email, change their tags, remove them from a campaign, pause or unpause uh, some campaign. Lots of different stuff I can do here. I can also um, search this, just so you know, I can type in email and send them an email or notify somebody on my team with an email. Um, now I've also got filters. These are, these are a bunch of different elements that are designed to kind of help you, you know, move contacts around the map in various ways. Um, a wait obviously pauses them as they move down this map that waits for a certain period of time. Uh, a split adds a split test to the campaign. So you can send some people down one path and, an other, and the other half of your people or whatever down the other path. And uh, you can run a split test that way. Um, I'll get to goals later. A go-to is uh, an element that just kind of redirects people to another element on the map. Uh, a fork basically 
doubles your contacts. So if you've got contacts coming down this path, um, if you add a fork there, it's going to turn that one contact into two instances of the contact and run those contacts down both paths. And, uh, and a condition is a segmentation tool. So it's, you know, basically a condition that says, if this is true, then send them down one path. And if it's not true, then send them down the other path. And then of course we have the end here as well. Uh, lastly, we have um, these advanced tools, which are to send a web hook, um, add, add or remove membership, uh, WordPress membership. So um, what am I gonna do here? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send an email. So I'm gonna click on that. And then I wanna wait a little while. I'm gonna set these things up again. And then let's see, I'll probably send another email and then I'll wait a little while. And then I will um, send another email. Let's actually do, let's send an SMS. And then I'll wait a little while. And then I'm gonna send one more email and then I'll be done with them. The goal of all this process is to get them, let's say, to buy something. So say I wanted them to buy something. Well, let's just put the goal in there. Okay, so we're going to, and notice that the, it added a wait right here. It says wait until the goal is reached. And, uh, and then that's just going to be the end of the process. Let's just say this is a very simple process. So say they fill out a form, and what I want to do here is I want to send them the ebook, and then I want to wait that wait some period of time and say, hey, you didn't buy my product. Um, why don't you buy it and then wait some more and then say, hey, are you not getting my emails via an SMS? And then I'll wait some more and then I'll say last chance. You really need to buy my product and then I'll wait here basically forever until the goal is reached. Okay. And then that's the end. So what are we going to do here? These are all just, um, these are all just placeholders. You'll notice these, these elements have, have, um, have red dots on them. And if you go over here, you'll see that you have a little checklist with a five on it. That means we have a bunch of unconfigured elements on my map, which means I can't publish it while I have these unconfigured elements. So, um, so you can actually click on here and it'll go to the various, to the various uh, you know, elements that you need to fix up before you publish this thing. And as you, uh, as you configure them, they'll just go away on this list. So you can also add things here. Um, you know, don't forget, wait, I gotta add it first. Um, yeah. Don't for, uh, edit. Don't forget to um, check the content and then, um, you know, that can sit there. That's just a reminder for myself. Um, okay, so here's the emails. I can, um, you know, pop an email in there. I can take a little note for myself. This is a cool email. It's just a note, note to myself there. And, uh, and there we go. So there's the, uh, the email that's sending out the ebook. And then I'm going to wait for a while. This just says wait forever. So if I left it like that, they're going to get stuck there and they're just going to wait. So contacts will pile up there and then the, they won't move on because forever is a mighty long time. Now, weights are important. There's a lot of functionality in these weights. There's uh, four different kinds. Well, there's five different kinds of weights. There's the forever one and then there's four others. And it's important to understand how these work. So, uh, so let's dive into it. The first one is we're gonna wait until some time passes. Um, that's pretty simple, right? I'm gonna wait one day and five hours and 15 minutes, and that's it. It's gonna move on after that amount of time. That makes good sense. I can also check this box and say, and then wait until 10 a.m. in my time zone or in the contacts time zone. So that's pretty cool. I can set up, uh, you know, so you can understand how this is going to work, right? And it actually tells you right here what it's going to do. We tried to make this thing um, one of the one of the design principles that we had as we as we built this thing is that we would not have any magic happening. And, and what we meant by that is that 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 there should you should never have to look in the documentation for for to try and discover how anything is going to work. It should just be really clear. Uh, Things are going to work exactly as they say, as they look like they're going to work, and uh, and so we've tried to put as you know tried to follow that as much as possible. There's um, you know just a couple of little weird edge cases where you know there's some tricky stuff, but you'll almost never run into them. Um, basically, this thing is always going to work just the way it seems like it's going to. Um, so and the way it says it's going to. So it says wait one day, five hours, and fifteen minutes. Then wait until 10 a.m. in the context time zone. So that's exactly what it's gonna do. It's gonna, it's gonna 
you know, if, if they get to this wait at 9 a.m. in the context time zone, well, it's not going to fire today. It's going to wait one hour, one day and five hours and 15 minutes. One day, by the way, is 24 hours. That's not a calendar day. It's nothing magical. A day is 24 hours. Uh, so one day, five hours, 15 minutes, and then it's going to wait till the next time 10 a.m. in the contacts time zone shows up. Um, so that's how that's going to work. If we don't know the context time zone, of course, it'll roll back and, and um, it'll send it in your time zone. Um, but typically, we do know the context where we have a good guess at the time, context time zone because we've captured that um, automatically when they filled out one of their entreport forms. If you imported them, then we don't know uh, the time zone and, and, uh, and we'll, it says the, the time zone in each context record. So you'll be able to see what that's going to be. Okay, that's how some time passes works when you set it that way. Now, the next option is to wait until a specific date arrives. So it's exactly uh, what it sounds like. It's just going to wait until a specific date arrives. So for example, March 13th, 2019. And then in my con time zone or in the context time zone, that's uh, hopefully pretty self-explanatory. So it's going to wait until 2013 uh, or 313, 2019 in my time zone. Um, you can check this box that says ignore the year uh, and wait until just the month match, the day and month matches, then proceed. So why would you do that? That's usually there. This is the same functionality we had um, back in, in date sequences. Um, and it's usually, usually used for things like anniversaries and birthdays, right? You can't, um, you want to be able to wait until, um, you know, a particular person's birthday or whatever, or, you know, may say you want to send something out on, on, um, you know, the 4th of July every year. Uh, well, you can't, you don't want to have to set it every year, right? It's not, it's not, um, you know, next year it won't ever be 313 2019 again. But if I wanted to send it anyway on 313, then you could check that box and it would just send it on March 13th every year, not just on uh, 2019. And then again, wait until the time of the day is uh, 1030 AM. And, uh, and, and that, and then it's going to, then it's going to move on. So it's going to just wait right here. And then the contact will, you know, once this is done, once this, once this time is up, what's going to happen? Well, the obvious thing is going to happen and they're going to move on down to the next step in the campaign. Now, people often ask, well, what happens if they get here and it's already past March 13th, 2019? What's going to happen? Well, guess what? They're going to be stuck there. There's no magic that is going to happen in the system. There's, it's not going to magically um, guess that you meant for them to just pass that weight, for example, if that date is passed, that would be crazy. There are other ways to set this up if you want um, somebody to get this email if that date has passed. But uh, what it's going to do is exactly what it says it's going to do. It's going to sit there and wait till March 13th, 2019 at 10.30 a.m. in your time zone. And if that date's already passed, they're stuck there. That's how that's going to work. And, and we did that so that so that you know exactly what's going to happen. And, and there are certainly use cases where you don't want somebody to get an email after a certain date has passed. And so that's how you do it. Now they're going to move on past this. And let's see what are the other wait possibilities here. Well, I can wait for some time to pass. I can wait for a specific date to arrive. I can also wait for a, a date relative to a contact's date field. So this is kind of... Uh, you know, you would use something like this if you wanted to send out a birthday sequence or something like that. So say I wanted to send this out five days before the contact's birthday in their time zone. And then uh, again, ignore the years. So if you want to send this every year, five days before their birthday, you can do that. And then wait till the time of the day is 10 a.m. And again, it'll go in the context time zone. Um, <clears throat> And uh, because it starts at, you know, 10, it'll wait till five days before um, birthday at 10 a.m. in the context time zone. So it says exactly what it's going to do. And then what happens next, it just moves on down, down the path. All right. So that's uh, another possibility. You can also, of course, um, you know, wait till five days after or whatever it might be. And then um, you can also just wait until uh, the day of the week is a particular day, right? So that's pretty simple. Uh, pretty obvious. You can wait until the day of the week is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, 
or Friday if you don't want to send emails on Saturday. So that's um, that's good. Now let's. Here's a good question. What if I wanted to wait one day, one day, and then I wanted to send an email, but I only want to send emails on weekdays. Well, I can stack my weights up, if that makes sense. So I can wait a day, and then they'll be, they'll, a day will pass and they'll move down here and then they'll wait until it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 10 a.m. in the context time zone. So, um, you know, if it is popped here at six in the morning, well, it'll wait till the next day at six in the morning and then it'll wait until, um, you know, a weekday at 10 a.m. in the context time zone and then it will move on down and, and uh, run the next element in this campaign. So hopefully that's, that's pretty clear. Now, um, let's see what else we got here. Now let's talk about uh, goals. So we're just basically gonna wait and then we're gonna, I think I got through all the waits, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Um, we're gonna you know, wait some time, send an email, wait some time, send an SMS, wait some time. Now this one here is interesting. So this is gonna wait until the goal is reached. This is a special wait because it is attached to a goal here. And, and what is a goal? A goal, is a lot like, I can zoom out on this thing so we can see the whole thing. A goal is like a trigger in the sense that it's kind of like sitting there waiting for some, some action to happen. And incidentally, guys, I can hit, on, I'm on a Mac here, I can hit hold the control key down and then use my scroll, um, scroll wheel to zoom in and out too. It's kind of a handy little um, way to move around this thing. So a goal, uh, what does it say? It says moves the contact to this element when any of the selected goals are achieved. So I click this thing to configure it. And what are my goals? The way to think about goals are what is it that uh, the, you know, typically it's going to be what is it that I'm trying to achieve with the, with the series of steps that are up above the goal. So in this case, um, it's purchased. They purchase a product. It is, they purchased my 42 cats. And boom. Okay. The product is purchased 42 cats. That's the goal. And then what is the weight above? It says, it says, wait here until the goal is reached. So it's going to, these guys are going to get all these emails and SMS messages, and then they're going to just sit here until this goal is reached. Now that, um, and then what's going to happen. It's going to, when the goal is reached, the contact is going to move here. Well, is that for sure? True. Let's make sure that we are setting this up right. We have some settings here that are really important. Okay, so these settings are important. Who can achieve this goal? It's important to, that you get this stuff right. So who can achieve this goal? Um, well, any contact on the map can achieve the goal. That, what that means is that um, you know, if they're on this map already, then they, can, they, will, they will be, um, you know, this goal will be triggered if, um, they purchase 42 cats. Um, now you can also limit it to only contacts on the previous weight. So um, I want this, this particular goal only to be achievable by people who are sitting right here. Now that wouldn't make sense in this particular case, but in other cases it does. I just built a map yesterday um, for our own business where I only wanted this thing to be achievable by people who were here. Uh, if you remind me, I'll explain why I did that and what the use case was there in a minute. Another option here is context on any upstream element. So that what that means is that <clears throat> the only people who can achieve this goal are the people who are on this path of elements up above, right? If they're over here, maybe on this path, maybe this is a whole other series of stuff um, and, and they buy the product. Well, they're not going to they can't achieve this goal because they're not on an upstream element. Again, that's that's useful and it's actually useful in this particular case. Um, I'll show you how that would work. And then um, lastly, any contact in the account. Now that if you choose that, that means they don't even have to be on this map. Any contact in the account that um, that buys 42 cats is gonna be added to this campaign and plopped right there. And then what happens uh, as soon as they hit that goal well, they're going to move on immediately. They're going to move. They don't sit there because this context don't sit at, um, they only sit at weights and endpoints on campaigns. So they don't sit at goals. They hit a goal and then they move right on. 
So what I want to have happened is any contact on this map. And then we've got one more question here that's important to answer. What happens when they achieve this goal, when the goal is achieved? Well, there's a few different options here. One is that you can move them here. And that's the most common thing to do with a, uh, with a goal. Uh, another thing you can do is add them here again. If you want to achieve, have them achieve the goal, but you want them to keep getting you know, the series of steps that they were, wherever they were already at on your map, you can do that too. Another possibility is that if they're already on the map and they achieve this goal, then just ignore the goal. Okay. Again, there's lots of different ways of, of setting this stuff up. There's use cases for all this stuff. Um, but we've kind of like set these uh, defaults to be the most common use cases. And, and by default, it'll say any contact on this map and move the contact here to this goal when the goal is achieved. Okay, so now what's gonna happen in this case with these settings? What's gonna happen here is somebody's gonna come in, they fill the form, they're gonna get their ebook, they're gonna be sitting here on this wait for a day or so, and they're gonna get this email, and they're gonna be sitting on this wait for a day. And now let's say right at that moment, while they're sitting here waiting for a day, they buy this product. Well, what's going to happen here? Who can achieve the goal? Any contact on this map? Well, are they on the map? Yeah, they're right up, right up top here. Um, if the contact is on the map, then move the contact here when the goal is achieved. Cool. So what's going to happen? They're going to get plucked off of this, this weight that they were at. They were sitting right here. They're going to be removed from that weight. They're going to skip all this stuff, and they're going to be plucked right down here on the goal and then immediately they will move down to the what happens next and in this case nothing happens next of course we can click this plus here and we can send them an email that says uh you know thanks for buying the product here's access to it or here it is or whatever you might want to say or somebody will be calling you or you know expect it in a week whatever you want to say about that purchase you can do that right here um and then uh you know you can end it or whatever it might be so That is how this is going to work. You typically want to have a series of steps and then a goal at the end of the series of steps and then the end of the thing. Now, there's a particular, a particular feature about this weight right here. It works a little bit different than the other weights because it's attached to... Uh, a goal here. And you'll see that when you, it says wait until the goal is reached, so they're stuck here. But you, if you click on this one, this one is special, as you'll see. Um, so if you look over here, you can see that the settings are a little bit different. What does it say? It says wait here until forever or continue immediately when the goal, when the attached goal is achieved. So what does that mean? It means they're going to wait here and move down here when the goal is achieved. But you can also change this. So you can change this weight. So say I want to do something like this. Say I want to wait, wait one day. Now, now what's going to happen here? You can see it's added this, this section off to the left here. And what does it say? It's all pretty, pretty, um, pretty clear, I think. It says wait one day. But then over here it says continue here if goal is not achieved within the time frame. Okay, what does that mean? It means that they're going to sit here and wait. Obviously, if you, it says here, wait here until one day passes or continue immediately when the attached goal is achieved. Okay, so what they're going to do here is they're going to wait one day and if they buy the product, they're going to move down here. But if they don't buy the product, if they don't reach that goal within the time frame, which is one day, then they're going to move down this other path. So how is this useful? Well, this is useful um, very often when you have a, for example, an abandoned cart um, sequence, right? So it might say, maybe the goal is, maybe I added another, I want to add another goal here. My goal really is to try and get them to my shopping cart page. So what do I do? I put a visits, uh, a landing page, and this is my cart. Maybe I have, this is my demo account with a bunch of pages. Maybe I have a one that's called cart. Um, okay, so um, my goal is that they my goal is that they visit this page. They would move down here. Then I'm going to give them. I don't. I don't want to give them uh, an hour. I want to give them, or I don't want to give them a day to purchase my product. Pro, uh, my product. I want to give them an hour, and, I, and I'll say, 
Okay, so it's they visited the page and then they're going to move down here, right? So they get moved down and then they, they immediately move on and they'll sit here for an hour and we're waiting for them to buy 42 cats. But what if they don't? Well, in an hour later, it's going to go down here and it's going to say, um, we're going to send them an email. It's going to say, hey, what happened? Right? I'm not going to do this right now, but abandoned cart email. And say, what happened? You visited my page, but you didn't, you didn't buy my product. Okay. And then we can wait another day and say, hey, I know you were interested, blah, blah, blah. And go down this whole path. And, and then what's going to happen? Say they're down here and they buy the product. Is it going to give them this? Well, let's see. Any contact on the map, it's going to move them here when it's achieved. So no, it's not. They're not going to get these additional emails. They're going to if they're gonna, if they buy it while they're waiting here, it's gonna move them over here, send them the send them the email that says thanks for purchasing, and move them on down the path. So this is exactly how you would want to set up your typical follow-up sequence. Now, um, there's a ton of advantages to setting things up this way, and they're all uh, a lot of them are become clear when you start getting into performance mode. Um, no, okay. Uh, so, um, so yeah, they'll become clear when we get into performance mode. I'm not going to have time to get into performance mode today. I think we'll do that in a, next week's um, next week's training Tuesday because it's a whole bunch of other stuff on its own. And uh, we'll, we're already uh, 40 minutes into this thing, and I want to get into the specific use cases that were um, that were asked about in the um, in the in the, on the Facebook group this week. So <clears throat> let's see, what else am I missing about this? I think we got it. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you is um, the go-to element because that's important. I'm zooming in here. I can delete this element. Oh, a couple things. Actually, I want to show you show you a couple things. Say I want to, um, well, let's see, let's do the one thing at a time. Filters, go-to, I add this go-to thing uh, and I just grab this. It's pretty cool. I grab this and I can drag it anywhere on here to any element, most elements. Um, and, uh, and what's gonna happen? So they get added manually, they're gonna instantly move down here, they're gonna instantly follow this path and get this email, and then they'll be plopped right here at this weight. And so, you know, that's just what happens. So actually, um, somebody asked the question, what happens if I, you know, have a contact or a group of contacts and I wanna add them, you know, at a specific place later in my, uh, in my campaign, well, what I do is I use this and I would say, um, you know, I want to move them down here. I want, and then I can, what I would do is I just save, publish this campaign. And then I would go, you make sure you publish it because remember, um, we have, okay, hold on, I'm going to show you something. Um, test, I can save this sucker. Oops. Um, Um, but it's not published yet. So let's see, I'm going to, I got to go set all these emails up, but well, let me publish it if I've got unconfigured stuff. So I can go through here and configure all these items. I want to show you kind of how this works. So I'm going to just set these up real quick. Um, done. Send an SMS done. Oh, did I not? There's some, I got to select a number here. Done send an email. So I'm just putting a bunch of nonsense in here so I can publish this thing. Done. And lastly, I'm done. Okay, now I can publish this sucker. Oops, there's an un there's a what happens next somewhere. Where is it? Oops, right here. I'm just going to put an end on that sucker. Now I can publish it. Save and publish. Okay, close. Now you'll notice that this guy right here is um, has become activated. And this is important. Um, what we have here is the revision history. So it says here, this is the currently published version. And, uh, and that means this is what's actually going to happen if you uh, run this thing. When people get, you know, this is the one that's actually running right now. So if I add people here, they're going to get added over here. But look at this. If I move this over here, I can save it. Now I've got something different going on here. I've got an unpublished draft. So if I, and it even says this, working on a draft of your currently published campaign, delete this draft and restore the currently published version. No, I wanna keep working on this. So 
what I what I can under, what I need to understand here is that that what I'm looking at is not actually what's happening live in reality. What's happening live in reality is this. I can click on it and I can see, right? If I add people to this campaign manually, they're going to get this email over here. If I want to look at my unpublished draft, I can go back and click on it and I can see uh, this, you know, this campaign that I'm working on. And, um, and so, so if I add them to the campaign, they're not going to get this email. They're going to get that one down there. If I want them to get this, I can delete this, of course, and go back to this, or I can just publish this sucker, save and publish. And then what happens? Everything changes. I've got the currently published version is now V2. The previously published version is uh, my old version. I can go look at that. And that can be useful sometimes because um, sometimes when you've got multiple published versions, your stats are going to seem weird and you want to be able to go back and see how, how people got where they were. But, um, but that's how that's going. Uh, important to understand this because um, actually today, I believe, if not today, then certainly on Thursday, uh, we will be releasing this similar functionality, revision history and, and currently published version and previously published version and all that stuff um, for pages. Our pages system is going to have, have this, um, this tool. So um, also there's going to be an update to, to, this, um, to this system and that one. And we're going to start automatically saving your work as you go. So um, the save button will not be required. You won't, you won't ever lose anything. So anyway, um, so what I would do is if I, I wanted to add somebody here, I would just, you know, down here, I would, I would edit it. I would publish it and then I would add them and then I would, you know, um, change it back or whatever I wanted to do. So that's how I move people down, um, through a, uh, you know, down to some, some step farther down. I think, uh, if you wanted to, um, the specific question that was asked was how do I, um, here it says, uh, I'm looking at my other screen right now. It says, I would also like to see how you add someone to a campaign when you want them added later in uh, rather than at the beginning. For example, I have a nurture sequence that's 30 messages, and I want someone who's not a newbie to be able to join in after message 10. So I don't know what not, not a newbie means, but let's just say, um, let's say not a newbie. They fill out this form, and not a newbie means that they were added to my account um, you know, say, um, say, you know, more than a year ago. So I'd go to date added. Um, date added is, um, you know, less than or equal to, um, uh, let's say, let's say 180 days from now. I don't have a year ago. I have 180 days ago. Um, so data added is less than or equal to 180 days ago, six months ago. Um, so they were added to my account six months ago. Um, so it's going to go down there. They, somebody fills out the form. And what's going to happen? They're going to move immediately down to this condition. It's going to check and say, well, were they added to my account more than 180 days ago? Uh, uh, and if, if yes, well, let's see, I should do this. Okay. Actually, this is a great example. If yes, if they were added more than 180 days ago, so they're old, they're, they're oldies, then they're going to go down this path. And if no, they're going to go down that path. So I did this, I did this wrong. I need, I want newbies to go down this path, right? So what do I do? I can grab this right here. I can move this over and drop it. And then it gives me some options here. It says, uh, what do I want to do? Move only this item, so the very this one element, or move this item and everything below it. Or do I want to copy just this item or copy this item and everything below it? In this case, I want to move this item and everything below it, and boom, uh, that's exactly what happens. So were they added to my list um, more than six months ago? Yes. All right, so those are the, the oldsters. In that case, I'm going to add a go-to here. And I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to add them down here. And, uh, and that's the answer to your question. That's exactly how you do that. You can actually even um, come in here and, um, and you can add something above this. So say you wanted to send them a welcome email um, before you, you know, hey, welcome to my list. Or uh, welcome to you know, or here's the ebook or whatever. But you don't want them to get you know all these other emails. Then you know, boom, there you go. Down they down they go 
um, down the path. Um, of course, you can make these conditions, uh, you know, do basically anything you want. Now, let's say you wanted to copy this whole thing. You like what you set up here, but um, but you want to set it up for, um, you know, kind of like all different for a different trigger or whatever. You can actually grab this guy. Notice you can reorder these things too, by the way. These, that's what these arrows are for. You can, just to keep organized, you can reorder these guys. You can also grab this sucker and drag it down on top of this, this add a trigger button right here. And it's going to allow me to um, copy only this item, just the trigger, or copy this item and everything following. I can click this and I've just doubled my whole situation. And then I can go through here and edit it if I wanted the triggers to be a little different or different condition or whatever it might be. Uh, and then people will move down here. Uh, notice that this thing is uh, no longer connected. Just have to reconnect my go-tos and uh, everything else is the same. Um, so that is uh, useful to remember. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is um, date sequences. So um, I'm gonna clean this up. I think there's no reason for me to have a list of stuff here, delete everything below it. Delete this item and everything below it. Now, let us look back at the community questions I had here. Um, here's one. It says, uh, here's what I want. Whenever anybody signs up for my newsletter or downloads my freebie, they're automatically added to uh, another, another campaign, basics and more. Um, and then... Uh, how do I add them to that? Uh, while simultaneously suppressing those who may have already taken that class in the past. Okay. Um, okay. I think the other question here was how do I schedule emails at specific times? You do that with wait. I think I already explained that. Um, so how do I sign, they, somebody signs up for basics and more. Um, they fill out a newsletter, okay, and they're added to the basics and more. So we'll, I, I guess the answer here is that they fill out a form, right? This is your newsletter form, and uh, we can delete this. So this is my um, newsletter, newsletter sign up. And this could be your, um, your basics and more sequence right here they fill this thing out and uh and here you go you just start firing away now if you wanted to organize this differently and have them you know be added to a sub campaign you could you could do that add them to another campaign that's a that's a possibility and that can be a good idea here's actually a reason why because you asked another question um and that is you want them to be able to control their um I want to be able to control their their uh, their own subscription on the unsubscribe page. Okay, that's good. So this is a good uh, example of, of one more thing. So let's say we have um, this is my weekly e news, and then I have another one which is class promotions. Um, so there's a form. It's another a different form for class promotions, and uh, it's like that. And then I'm just going to duplicate that. And that's for the third one, which is my uh, webinar notifications. Okay, cool. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add these to sub campaigns. So instead of putting all the emails on um, on this on these particular uh, on this particular map, I'm going to add these to the, these sub campaigns. I'm going to do that for a few reasons. And then, and then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say that the goal of all this is to purchase my product. Okay. Um, Purchase a product, 42 cats, done. I'm gonna delete this end here. And I'm gonna add a go-to. I'm gonna put them here. I'm gonna add a go-to here. I'm gonna put that here. Okay, so now, what have I done here? Three forms, three sub campaigns, that's other campaigns that they're gonna be added to. And then go-tos that wait until the product is uh, uh, until the product is purchased. Now, this is a particularly uh, interesting and unique situation. What does this say here on the add to campaign? It says add contact to another campaign and then return here when they eat, reach an end or an exit in that campaign. So what's gonna happen here? What campaign are they gonna get added to? I'm gonna create a, uh, a sub campaign, which is like 
Save my newsletter campaign. Done. You're going to get added to my newsletter campaign. And this is going to be my, I don't know what, the other campaign, three different campaigns. And they're going to be moving along. They're going to sit here while they move through that other campaign. And what's going to happen is if they ever hit an end or an exit in that other campaign, then that'll be the end of this step. And they'll move on here. They'll, they'll be back here. They'll move on to the next step and they'll sit here and wait. Okay. So why would I want to do that? Well, a couple of reasons, a couple of interesting reasons. One is um, that um, I can control, watch, watch, whoops, I can't publish this just yet. I got to fix this up. Um, I can allow the user to control their unsubscribe settings on a campaign by campaign basis. So for example, if I want them to be able to unsubscribe from my newsletter campaign, but stay on another campaign, I need to have a unique campaign for that because the subscription settings happen here. Show this campaign on the subscription management page. That's the unsub page. You can check that. And what is the public name? This is my newsletter um, newsletter um, list. I can call it whatever I want. Oops. Um, uh, Stay, and this is the customer is going to be able to see this. Stay on this list if you want to um, get my weekly newsletter. Functionality is already in uh, the same functionality we had in, in sequences. So, um, so this is how that works. And if they want, they'll be able to remove themselves from that uh, campaign. Okay. And then the other thing that can happen here is that you can, they will move. Uh, again, if they purchase this thing, they'll they'll move off of here down to here uh, if the product is purchased, and then and then they'll continue to move down the map. Why is this interesting? Well, again, you'll see you'll understand better when we get into performance mode and the reporting. But the reporting is going to be really interesting uh, if you kind of like set up a high level map like this, um, because you're going to be able to see you know which one of of your uh, you know, lead magnets or which one of your, your marketing programs is creating uh, the most sales for you and, uh, and, and stuff like that. So I'll, sh I'll show you more about the reporting because that will inform something about how you want to organize your campaigns. Uh, and again, I'll do that next week. So um, last thing I want to show you is kind of like, you know, for those of you who are familiar with date sequences, or product launches, date sequences are, are, the, are the legacy system in Entreport that we, you, we would use before we had this campaign builder. Um, or product launches, if you uh, run a product launch, you know, kind of how that works is that you, you know, you run a, run a particular launch at a certain time. So it's, it's uh, you know, May, or what is it? It's March 12th today. So say you want a particular email to go out um, to people on March 12th. And then another email to go out on March 15th and another email to go out on March 15th. But if they sign up on March 14th, you don't want them to get those old emails. You just want them to get the future emails. So the way you do that is you, um, you say you use this particular, um, particular set of triggers and you can find them all by typing in date here. And so the trigger is today matches the contacts date field. Or today is relative to a context date field, or today is a specific date. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to run this thing on the 14th, um, then well, that's going to happen. So uh, if and you'll notice that uh, any contact on the map is 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 what's going to work here. So um, you can't. You can't set this up to grab anybody in your account because you would in, everybody in your account would then uh, get added here. But basically, what will happen is when today is March 14th, then this thing is going to get triggered. And who's going to is going to trigger for? Well, it's going to trigger for anybody that's on this map already. So how I would set this up is I would I'm going to delete these because I don't need this right now. It's a new example. So I would say um, they filled out my form that says like, I wanna watch your video series or whatever it is. And then they're gonna get, I'm gonna get rid of this. They're gonna get, um, they're gonna get an email that says, okay, welcome to my launch. 
and and that's it. And then they're going to stop right here. Okay. And then on March 14th, they're going to move. Well, you can do whatever you want. You can move them over here uh, when this is triggered. So they're going to they're going to sign up. They're going to get the email. They're going to sit here. And then on March 14th, they're going to move here. What if I want to send it at 10 a.m.? I don't want to send it at midnight because it's it's uh, this is going to get triggered right at, at midnight, right? Um, it will also trigger for anybody who gets added to this campaign during the day of March 14th. Um, that is one of those magical things, the, the kind of rare edge case that you wouldn't know, but, but that is the truth. Um, so I'm going to wait until some time passes, which is just uh, 10 a.m. in the context time zone. Okay, so um, what's going to happen? They fill out the form, they get sent the welcome email, they stop, and then on the 14th, uh, we're going to move them here. We're going to wait until 10 a.m. in their time zone. We're going to send them an email, and we're going to end. And that's all we got to do. And then I'm going to I got to get them do do the whole thing again on the 15th. So I'm going to copy this everything below. So I'm going to change the date. It's not the 14th now. It's the 15th. Done. And wait until 10 a.m. in their time zone. Send a different email, and uh, and there we go. I can do the same thing for for newsletters. Copy the whole thing again. And this is going to be the 16th. Done. And I'm going to keep moving on. And then on launch day, I'm going to say, you know, here's, uh, you know, the card is open, blah, blah, blah. And um, everybody's going to move here and they're going to, um, they're going to move down this path. And so what I would do here is I'd do my whole like, you know, launch process down here. Um, hey, you know, it's launch day. Oh my gosh, everybody's coming. Here's the questions I'm getting, blah, blah, blah. And that all, you know, will come, come down here. And then I'll put a goal at the end of all that, which is that they buy my product. And that will ensure that once they buy, they don't keep getting all my launch emails. They move on to the next phase of the process, right? Because they'll skip over anything that, um, that uh, you know, is, is in here. And then what was the other piece? Uh, they want to... Uh, abandoned shopping cart we already talked about I think oh and then you want to send um, an email to non-openers so that's probably um, you know how you would do a, an email to non-openers is you would do it with a with a condition so you'd wait um, you know a day or whatever and then you'd say you'd ask the question did they open the email um, has opened an email particular email um, you know, equal, greater than or equal to one time. Oops, one time, done. Yes, then you then you don't send it again. If they did not open the email, then you uh, send it again. And then you can just, um, you know, move them back onto the main, onto the main path if you want to. So that's how you would do an, an unopened, um, you know, a resend to unopens. And then, okay, over here, I've got one more question that I want to answer before we wrap it up. And that is, um, best way to set up a dates campaign for a live event where people can join at any point from a week before the event until four days after some people come late without realizing they're late for a promotion. There are reminders before the event. That's what we, well, that's what we did here. Um, and let's see. Your reminders before the event, multiple sales messages after the event until the promotion period ends. So I think we've covered all that. Um, at each point, we need to make sure they haven't already bought the product. We don't need to worry about that. I mean, unless you think that they're going to get added to this thing and they've before the whole promotion, they've already added it. But the goal here is going to move them down, right? So you don't need, you know, they, they won't get added here again if they have already bought, bought the product. If you're worried that they are going to fill out your form again, after they bought the product, then what you can do is you can just, um, you can just, uh, I think, has ordered a has um, has ordered a certain amount of a product. So you can say if they fill this form out, you want to make sure that if they don't, you know, get added to this whole process if they have already purchased the product, well then you could say, um, uh, you know has ordered zero of 42 cats. And that's the only way that they get added to this thing. If they have ordered more than uh, zero of 42 cats, then th this thing's just gonna get ignored. They'll never be added. 
Of course, you can be fancier than that. You don't want to just ignore their form fill out because they're going to be like, hey, what the hell? What I would probably do is I'd probably make a condition here. And I'd say, um, I'd say, have they ordered more than 42 cats? Um, uh, ordered a certain amount of our product. It's ordered, have they ordered zero of my 42 cats? Yes, they've ordered zero. Great. Um, welcome to the process. Here I would say, um, hey, you already bought this thing. This promotion isn't for you. And then I would end them. Now, check this out. I don't want them getting all these extra promotions if they've already been on this thing. So instead of an end, what I do is I check this box right here and I'm going to remove them. Remove them contacts from this campaign. Boom. And notice that this now becomes an exit. So they're not going to be on this map anymore uh, if they if they came down this process and and get so they're going to get booted. That way on the 14th or the 15th, when this is triggered, they're not on this map anymore. And so they won't move here. So that's how I would handle that. And then, um, and then after the campaign, um, they let's see. You wanted to make sure that people that are added to this thing after the campaign. Oh, you need to pause other, you want to pause things too? Okay, that's a good idea. So watch this. You can do, um, you want them on this campaign, you want to pause them on, say, your newsletter campaign while they're uh, in this launch campaign. You can just do that. I can pause my newsletter campaign um, while they're here, and then I can make sure that I unpause them at the end of the promotion, right? So on, um, you know, on the 17th, Today is a date, what date? Um, today is a specific date. It's the 18th, done. Then I'm gonna unpause them. And, uh, and then just end that. So that will make sure that everybody gets unpaused at the end of the time. And then uh, I guess I don't understand the last thing. If they, if, they add, if they get added after a certain date, then you want them to get certain emails. So let's just say, um, you know, you can, uh, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do that. You can add a condition here. You could say, um, add a new condition that says, uh, um, something like, um, days before or after a certain date. So today is after, um, a specific date, like say it's after today is after the 18th at 12 AM in my time zone. And you can say, um, if you only wanted it to be, uh, I can do it, I can do it again, today's before or after. And it's, uh, and today is before a specific date, like the 23rd at 12 a.m. in my time zone. So uh, is it between these dates? So after my promotion, but, but not too far after my promotion? Um, yes, so I'm gonna have to move this over here. Uh, move this and everybody else. So if it's after the promotion, then I'm going to, um, you know, probably just send them send them somewhere else. Or maybe it's a post promotion. Maybe I do do my emails or something like that. Uh, you know, or maybe I send them just to this this part of the uh, to the follow up sequence or something like that. Oops. Whatever I want to do. Okay. So this is going to end up being, you know, it's all going to work the way it seems like it's going to work. And what's going to happen at the end is you're going to see um, some incredible reporting on this thing when we get to performance mode. We'll get to that next week. Um, so hopefully, uh, I think I answered all the questions that I was asked um, in terms of the this Facebook community. Uh, how do I organize things? Uh, do statistics start only from publishing? Okay, I got a few more questions here. I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, how do you stay organized? Lots of different ways to stay organized. Um, you can add notes to yourself. There, there's this little note taker here. Um, you can create reminders. Say, you know, this campaign is for that thing. And, um, you know, you can kind of zoom in here and see that you know, you can give yourself, leave yourself notes. You can also use your checklist to leave yourself notes. You can also create high level versions of maps and, and create sub campaigns. So there are lots of different ways to stay organized on here. Um, if you create a new campaign, yes, statistics only start from when you publish it. 
So if you uh, revise a campaign due to the error in configuration, will it apply to other people? Yes, it does apply to um, existing people. So um, stats are not wiped out if you change the configuration. So if you wanna wipe out the stats, what you do is you just copy the whole campaign, uh, unpub like pause, pause or delete the old one, and then publish the new one. So that's how you do that. And if I'm doing a, a newsletter, the best practice for adding uh, an email to the campaign is just to add it um, to the right as a new trigger. When today is um, a particular date, today is you know the, is May 1st, then um, add them all here, send the email, and, uh, and, and be done. And so that's, uh, that's what I would do. And I would have the, um, you know, the kind of sign up form over here where I welcome them to my newsletter sequence. And uh, it'll be interesting. You'll be able to see your newsletter, um, you know, your, your, your subscribers grow as you see, because you'll see the stats, um, you know, later on in this, in this process. Okay, that's enough for one day. I'm gonna leave it right there. It's an hour and seven minutes into this thing. That is the, uh, the deep dive into how to create campaigns using the campaign builder. All right, thanks so much for joining guys and we will talk to you next time.